Okay, so this is my TurboGrafx-16, and you guys saw the results of doing the AB mod. Now, when I did this, I wanted to do it quickly just to make sure it was actually going to work, and then it actually worked pretty well. But I wasn't really happy with the way everything attaches in here. So I wanted to sort of redo this, and I wanted you guys to see what it was that I did originally first. Let me see if I can pry this off here. All right. So you can see the connectors there. And then if you look inside, you can see what I did in there. Everything soldered together. What I essentially did is I ran a right channel, a left channel, and the composite video. And then I ran a single ground in and just sort of daisy chained it to all of them there. Now, the wire that I originally used was something that I had laying around the house here. It is a solid core copper wire. Uh, I have just a ton of it. It's thermostat wire. And I used it in my, uh, my fireworks control box. So I bought like 100 feet of it. And I use it a lot for a lot of different things. It's really easy to work with, especially when you're soldering small components. Unfortunately, it is not conducive to being connected to this thing here. So as you saw in the video that I showed you a few minutes ago, I attached these little D-sub connectors and the problem I had with those is they bend really easy. And even though I put the heat shrink tubing over them, the heat shrink tubing itself is not designed to, to be rigid. So even after it uh, cools off, it's still fairly flexible and I have to bend everything over to the right, and well, in any case, yeah, this stuff would bend and pop loose, so to test it out, I just took and taped it down. I just used scotch tape that I had sitting up there, and that's what we're going to correct today. Uh, what I'm going to do is take some stranded wire that I have. It is actually stranded wire that... <laughs> I scavenged out of an old extension cord that had gotten chopped one too many times. And, uh, yeah, of course I left it sitting across the room here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right here, and then I'll be back. All right, so what you see here is the stranded wire that I scavenged out of the old tattered extension cord. And, yes, I do tend to... Well, you're not going to be able to see that because this camera refuses to focus. Anyway, um, I do tend to scavenge old bits of wire that I think will be useful at some point. And, yeah, I'm a pack rat. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to rip this temporary crap off of here. And then I'm going to replace it with that. And you'll see what I'm going to do here in just a second. I'll get this all cleaned off. All right. Here is the back of the TurboGrafx-16. Here are the connectors that I was using that do not work. Um, I'm going to be cutting those off and using the stranded wire I have here, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you're looking at the back of this thing, and the camera's not going to focus, I'm not even going to bother trying to show you a close-up. But essentially, the, uh, the top pin on this side in the corner is right. Right next to that is a ground, which is the one that I use. Then on the bottom all the way to the end is left. So if we come over here to the other side, and I don't know how long I'm going to do this because I'm not left-handed, the top pin in the corner is blue, directly below that is green, and directly below that is red. I did not use any of those, but just inside of red on the bottom, the second pin in, is the composite video. That's what I used. I don't feel any need to do S-video or RGB because the composite video is so much better than the standard RF out. It's just ridiculous. So that is what I did. That's what I'm going to show you here. And I'm going to cut here and do some hacking and slashing, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I decided to do is instead of disconnecting all those little nuts in there, desoldering the wires, resoldering everything, and then having to reconnect everything back to this piece here, uh, I decided to connect the wires to this. Because honestly, I did not want to have to reconnect those little nuts in there because you got to use needle nose pliers. And it's not particularly easy, at least not for me, to thread those things on. So what I did instead is I connected the new wires to the old wires. 
and then heat shrinked everything up and I'm gonna braid these little wires together so that they're not all loose and and mixed up in there now I needed four wires I needed right channel left channel audio composite and uh, ground so how do you do that with just three colors well black is right channel white is left channel um, let's see here green is ground and then green with a little black mark on the end there I got a little black mark on either side is the composite video signal so I've left these really long uh, well just because they were already pre-cut and I'm going to like I said braid all this stuff together then I'm going to trim these down to the length that I need and then I'm going to come back and show you how I'm going to connect it. Very simple. Anybody can do it. Okay. Everything has been braided and trimmed so that we have less to work with. And actually, there was something I forgot to show you earlier. I don't know how well it's going to show up on this camera, but in here, see if I can get some light in here. In here, you will see, where's my little pointy screwdriver? That you've got these fins. And the fins fit on either side of this thing here. So what you have to do is trim a little bitty hole here so that all of this extra wire can be folded up into this compartment on the side here. So there you go. That's what I did there. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect it to the back of the system here. Get this out of the way here. And this is the most simple part that everybody seems to be afraid of. So we've got the composite video here and I know because I've marked it with my two little black lines that is going to connect to composite video on the back here and all I'm going to do is push it see if you can see here well you can't see because my fingers are in the way but push it right down onto the pin in the back of the system and it is a nice tight wow extremely tight fit and what I did I pushed it all the way down to the base there I don't know how well you can see that now you have a very tight connection. So that is the composite video. Now we need, oops, we'll hook up the uh, left channel first, which is this bottom pin down here. And again, very tight fit. All the way down. All right. We'll do, you know, twist this stuff up too tight. Need a little bit of working room. Right channel goes on the top pin on this side. And man, maybe I should have heated these up first. All right, if the wire that you end up using, it could be a uh, lamp cord, could be speaker wire, could be like me, I just went and had some stranded wire sitting around. Um, if it is too tight to get on, if you apply a little heat uh, with a lighter heat gun, whatever you want to use, it'll actually soften this stuff up and you'll be able to push it on much easier. Then just make sure you let it cool real good before you start moving things around. Alright, this is the ground. Oh crap, you know what I did? Even after marking these things, I got them all confused. This green is the ground. White is left channel. Even marking them, I still screwed it up. All right, so there you go. These are all pushed in. Now, I'm just going to leave them connected essentially by friction because I uh, want to be able to remove this if I decide to, you know, if I want to pull the back off or whatever. So you got everything pushed off to the side over here. You got your little notch cut in here. And you should be able to just go like this. Okay, frozen webcam take three. I don't know what the heck the problem is with my webcam, but it keeps freezing and it's really starting to tick me off. So anyway, I've had to take this part now for the third time and hopefully this take will work to show you that everything's in here. And the one thing I didn't show you is I'm gonna leave this power cord connected all the time because for some reason NEC decided to put the AC adapter inside this plastic cover and we don't want to be taking the cover on and off of here all the time because we don't want to mess with our connection. So I'm just going to leave it plugged in here and there's a notch on the end of this plastic cover right here. 
for the cord to go through. All I did was put a knot in here so that when I push this in, uh, it won't slide in and out when you're moving it around. Now, certainly, if you want to take it off and remove this thing on and off all the time, you can. Not something I want to do. So I'm just going to make sure all the cords are tucked into the right spot. And slide this thing in until it clicks. I said until it clicks. Oops. I actually slid it too far on. Hmm. Oh, duh. There we go. Now it clicks. It's in place. It's on there solidly. We've got our knot tied on the end here so that we can't accidentally unplug our cord. And hopefully everything's hooked up. That, in a nutshell, is my TurboGrafx-16AV mod. Uh, I apologize. I know it's rushed. I just never have time anymore. And it's all hacked up because I'm having camera issues. But uh, that is pretty much it. Hopefully that will give you guys an idea of what to do. If not, uh, I will leave a link below to a web page that has the pinout so that you can actually get a look at the pinout yourself. Uh, and even though there weren't many videos when I initially decided I was going to do this video, there have been a number of videos posted since then. Uh, there are three videos. Well, actually, there's two videos I'll link from Retro Swede. Uh, one is how to make, I think it was a SCART lead, uh, or maybe it was just RGB. I don't remember. But one of them is making a cord that will work on the uh, PC Engine or the European TurboGrafx-16. Uh, another one is an update that I'm pretty sure has a video response posted by Stig's Game Room showing his European TurboGrafx-16. Uh, another video is going to be by a gentleman that has a North American TurboGrafx-16 like this one, but instead of putting the, uh, the connectors on here, he opted to make an AV cable. He just hacked up an old AV cable Pretty much did what I showed you here. I uh, well, actually did what I originally did as far as connecting it using the D-sub pins. Uh, but anyway, he comes out with a cord instead of this. And the third and final one is a gentleman who did this mod here pretty much with no solder at all. So for those of you that are afraid to use a soldering iron, he uses speaker wire, pushes it on like I do here, and then literally just twists the wire on to these connectors. So... Yeah, it can be as complicated or as simple as you want, but even the most complicated version of this is still very simple. Uh, I don't know. I like the idea of spending... Pardon me. Damn, I'll have to cut that out. I like the idea of spending $5 to do an AV mod instead of spending $100 on the Turbo Booster. I'm sure a lot of you guys will like that as well. So, thank you very much for watching. I apologize for the length and the crappy quality of this video but I hope this helps somebody out. Okay, I figured I should probably show you guys that this does in fact work after the modifications. Uh, here's the TurboGrafx-16 with blazing lasers in it. There are the cords coming out of the back and running up to the television. I apologize, it's a mess here because I'm working on like 12 different projects and my kids were down here playing video games and watching Laserdiscs last night. So, here we go. I'm going to switch it on. You see that it is in fact working. And I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but this thing is crystal clear on my CRT. Uh, I feel no desire whatsoever to do an S-Video or RGB mod. I suppose if you were going to use this on a newfangled HD television, maybe you'd want to, but honestly, that's not the way you want to play it anyway. I'm just sad that I've been playing this thing for all these years using the RF signal. It's just about enough to make me want to cry. So. Hopefully this helps somebody. Uh, if you guys can't figure out how to do something after watching my video or checking out the links that I'm going to put below, uh, feel free. Send me a PM. I'll be more than happy to try and help you out if I can. And uh, thank you. I appreciate that you guys take the time to watch my stuff. I'll see you later. I'm going to have to play this game. This looks great.